Rotation is coming soon and we are going to see a massive shakeup in the meta we are going to be doing a lot of videos covering each deck archetype and seeing different examples of what they could look like post rotation and today we are covering charizard ex i'm jeff from InThirdPerson.com. make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and let's look at some post rotation deck lists for charizard ex i think for any existing deck the question is going to be did it survive rotation? And shout outs to Omnipoke. Follow them on YouTube. They do some amazing work covering the competitive Pokemon TCG scene. And they've put together this graphic where they went through all of the City League events in Japan and gave each of the decks championship points sort of a score to kind of see how well they are doing in their meta. Of course, Japan has already rotated and this serves as a kind of an example, a preview of what we're going to see in our neck of the woods when the time comes. And Charizard is kind of dominating the meta right now. It's the most popular deck with Charizard Pidgeot and then the third most popular deck with Charizard Bibarel. Pokeka Book put out their tier list. I think this is based on MetaShare, and Charizard is the clear S tier deck with 31.3%. I think that's MetaShare. I could be wrong. Regardless, Charizard currently considered top tier. The deck actually loses very little to rotation. It loses Battle VIP Pass, which it basically has a replacement for that's for the most part better than Battle VIP Pass, and it loses Mew, and that's a little bit unfortunate. Helped you grab items at the beginning of the game, but it's not that big of a loss, especially when you look at everything that it gained, including Buddy Poffin, Prime Catcher, Maximum Belt, the Mist Energy, and more for the Bibro variants, the Cryptomaniacs deciphering. And one of the biggest gains is that Path to the Peak is no longer in the format. You can't shut down Charizard's Infernal Rain by slapping down a stadium. It is free to run wild, and running wild it is. Let's look into more detail on some of the new cards that Charizard is getting access to. Maximum Belt is a A-spec card. You can only have one of these in your deck, and this one lets you do plus 50 damage to EX Pokemon. And that's absolutely nuts because Charizard is a an attacker that's damage is based on how many prizes your opponent has taken and in the early game it's a little weak hitting for only 180 damage but with the maximum belt if you're hitting an ex and there's a pretty good chance you're hitting an ex at the beginning of the game with the maximum belt you are doing a whopping 230 damage and that is the magic number to one hit ko basically any basic pokemon ex allowing you to get insane tempo in the early game taking two prizes on your second turn absolutely nuts prime catcher is another a spec that charizard decks can consider lets you switch in one of your opponent's active pokemon but you also have to switch in a new active pokemon from the bench it is item based gusting this is basically cross switcher as one item or uh, guzma as as an item instead of a supporter card incredibly powerful effect and charizard benefits from this at least the pidgeot variant where you can switch a another pokemon into pidgeot with pidgeot in the active and then you just retreat pidgeot for free so it's basically just an item based boss's orders which is absolutely nuts buddy poffin is basically battle vip pass for evolution decks lets you search your deck for up to two basic pokemon with 70 hp or less and put them onto your bench then shuffle your deck this is pretty much a battle vip pass that works throughout the game but you can't bench rotom or luminion on the bench which is fine i've seen most of the list have some combination of nest balls in there as well to compensate for that but buddy poffin in general is kind of a big deal and a great buff for charizard mist energy helps charizard deal with some of its more pesky matchups like a giratina v star or a roaring moon where when mist energy is attached effects of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks do not apply. So stuff like Star Requiem from Giratina V-Star or Frenzied Gouging from Roaring Moon do not affect Charizard when it gets hit, when it has Mist Energy equipped. Now, most of the lists I've seen, not every deck, Charizard deck in this preview runs Mist Energy, but the ones that do have at least one, which is probably enough to counteract that effect. 
Cryptomaniacs Deciphering is a supporter card that I'm starting to see in the Bibral variant of this deck, where you get to search your deck for two cards, shuffle your deck, then put those cards on top in any order. And if you can imagine, you've got a Bibral build, you've got less than five cards, you play the Cryptomaniacs Deciphering, and then you use Bibral to draw into those cards, which can really help you set up or get the pieces you need for whatever combo it is you're building throughout the game. This first Charizard Pidgeot list is as close as I could find to what we currently build with some of the new cards introduced. We still have the, the Charizard line, the Pidgeot line. We have the Rotom V for drawing cards on turn one. We have Luminion for grabbing a supporter uh, from our deck and putting it into our hand. Some of the new cards in here, we've got the four copies of Buddy Poffin over here instead of our Battle VIP pass. Heavy count of ball search with four Ultra Balls and four Nest Balls to get some of our other Pokemon in play. We also have the Maximum Belt here so we can do that plus 50 damage, which is nice. This player has an interesting split of stadiums here. They've got one copy of Collapse Stadium, which makes sense. It's generally disruptive to a lot of different decks, and you can get rid of Rotom or Luminion on your bench if you've got a full bench and getting rid of that two prize liability. And we also have the, the Pokemon league hq where basic pokemon need one more energy to attack this can help against certain decks like the big basic decks that can hit really hard like a chen pao forcing well, i mean chen pao can just attach energy with backscalibur but other decks like a moridon or something like that would need more energy to attack and last but not least six energy here which is a number that some players have already started experimenting with outside of japan that kind of freaks me out but it has proven to be successful i think i'd still go with seven but six energy has proven to work at least well enough list number three includes gengar which is kind of a weird inclusion but i don't hate it here. In case you're wondering, Gengar is from Paldean Fates, and its ability Nightgale allows you to switch your active Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. This is very much a response to the Snorlax matchup, where Snorlax basically destroys Charizard by trapping a Pokemon into the active, and then Charizard usually has no way of getting them out of there. But Gengar gives you the opportunity to switch once per turn pretty much nullifying that matchup. Now, there are other ways that Snorlax could respond. They could use stuff like uh, Flutter Main and then put Gengar, trap Gengar into the active or something like that could be a possibility, but Gengar definitely gives you more options in the Snorlax matchup. One more Charizard Pidgeot list, and this one sees the return of Arceus V-Star. Now, Arceus was a card that players were using in their Charizard lists early on, before it got dropped, but I don't mind its inclusion here actually, because with Arceus and the Maximum Belt, which this deck includes, Arceus can hit for 230 damage on Pokemon EX. So you've got one Fire Energy, double Turbo, plus the Maximum Belt. Arceus is hitting for 230, which is going to be enough to knock out pretty much any basic EX Pokemon. And on top of that, you can Starbirth and grab two cards of your choice, helping you set up even more. So Arceus is a very interesting inclusion back into the Charizard deck. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of like it, especially if you can get the maximum belt on that second turn. Now let's move on to Charizard Bibrel examples. Charizard Bibrel is a archetype that players have been experimenting with for some time, and it seems like it's having its breakout moment right now. This particular list runs two copies of Entei, which kind of makes me uneasy. I don't like Entei as an attacker in Charizard, even though it's proven to be successful. Uh, two copies feels like too much. However, it does give you an extra target for four seal stone, which this deck includes, and I can't hate on that. And then it's running Cryptomaniacs Deciphering, which lets us stack the deck with two cards of our choice, and then we'll be using Bibral to draw into those cards for extra consistency. And then one one interesting card on this list is Hisuian Basculin, which kind of ends up working like a battle VIP pass where for zero energy, gather the crew, get to search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon and put them on your bench, then shuffle your deck. If it gets knocked out on the following turn, it's no big deal. Charizard ends up doing even more damage. Or if it doesn't get knocked out, Infernal Rain can attach three energy. You attach one of those three energy onto Basculin so you can retreat and start the party. One more Charizard Bibral example. This one takes out the Entei V and puts in Gouging Fire EX. 
Now, Entei is a bit of a cheaper attacker. It's also a V Pokemon, so you can attach Forest Seal Stone to it. So Gouging Fire might hurt your consistency. However, this gives you an amazing early game attack. Exploding Flare for two fire and a colorless does 260 damage. And this Pokemon can't use Exploding Flare again until it leaves the active spot. 260 damage that Charizard can power up with Infernal Rain at the beginning of the game. And 260 damage is going to be knocking out a ton of stuff any basic EX, any basic V, and you're even gonna hit the lower end of the stage one EXs and uh, the lower end of the V-Star Pokemon as well, which is ridiculous. And to get around that whole can't attack again until it is moved out of the active, we do have a copy of Switch and Jet Energy in here for some extra pivoting. And in the background, after you attack with Gouging Fire, you set up a second Charizard so that you can accelerate even more energy. Very interesting take on the deck here. Moral of the story, Charizard looks awesome post-rotation. It's losing very little and it's gaining a whole lot, whether it is cards that are making it better or other cards like Path to the Peak that were hurting it before that have since gone away. Are you ready for an even more dominant Charizard? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, I got to get going. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on all the things, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at in third person. You can find me on Twitch at in third person where I stream the Pokemon trading card game every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. One last thing here. I should have noted this at the beginning of the video. I'll just put this right here. The meta is subject to change. International players may find some new sauce or even in Japan, they might find some things that bring Charizard down a notch. But this is just a look as it stands right now. So take all of this with a grain of salt, though I'm pretty sure Charizard's gonna be good going forward. Anyway, I gotta get out of here. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.